I had a conversation. I don't know that I've ever said this publicly. I've, men I've mentioned it, but I've never really gone into it. I had a, a few weeks of very intense private correspondence with the comedian Norm MacDonald. Wow. You know, Norm... It, it, I want you to take an hour to detail exactly <laughs> how that went down because he is one of my fa absolute favorite comedians. So he was always a... He's my favorite comedian. And I noticed on Twitter... <laughs> I, I was one of the first people he followed when he got on Twitter. He was... Say that again. He followed you or you followed... Well, I was following him. Yeah. He he followed me. And I <laughs> and I don't know when he started following me, but I, I was wow. just checking through Norm's page. I said, oh, Norm's following me. That's And he was following, at the time, I think 60 people. Wow. And, and I thought... And I... D I don't know why. I don't know where he saw was something. Was it a about mistake? It. it was a mistake, <laughs> a happy mistake if it was. Yeah. But I, I really didn't get it. And so I, the thing about Twitter is when you each follow each other, you can send private messages. But I said, I was so in awe. I've, I've met plenty of celebrities. Yeah. Truly, truly in awe of this man. I said, I don't want to abuse my follow privileges here. I don't want to send him a private message. And one day... He sent out a tweet where he said, I'm just in such pain. It's just so hard. It's so hard. Mm. Knowing now that he had been fighting cancer for 10 years secretly. Bless him. I now recognize that's what he was talking about. At the time I read that as, this is an eccentric, wild guy, and he's, yep. maybe he's suicidal. And I said, okay, I'm going to reach out. And I just messaged him. And I said, Norm, I've never messaged you before because I'm simply in awe of your genius. Mm -hmm. uh, but... If I can be of any help in what appears to be a moment of despair, please just let me know. And he writes back and he, sa he says, uh, thank you, Michael. Um, appreciate the note. I'm okay. But I, I would like to talk uh, because to not accept your offer would be, uh, <laughs> would be prideful or something. I said, okay. All right, Norm. What and instantly we, we're, we're talking about religion. And I haven't... I haven't published these. I mean, when I say these were messages, I mean, these were, they wow. became essays that we would wow. write to each other every night for weeks. Huh. Uh, like 800, 900 word essays <laughs> in some cases, you know. And, and and was it what? Are you trying to convince him of something? Well, I didn't or? have to convince him of a thing. So when you say they were like essays, what, what, what were you going back and forth about? Suffering? <laughs> well, I, I asked him about suffering. And I said, you know, do you... Norm, do you have a view of the world, you know, that sort of can help you make sense of this suffering? And he said, oh, yeah, Michael, I, you know, I know you're a Christian. He said, uh, yeah, I'm, I've just always known that the Bible is true. I've always known that Christianity is true. And I, he says, and you can never tell with him because you never know if he's like playing with you because he always played so dumb, but he was yes, so, so yes. brilliant. And he said, I'm not an educated man, <laughs> which is true. He's not an educated okay. man in the sense that he never had really formal schooling. He read everything. I mean, he could probably quote you Tolstoy forwards and backwards. But his, his actually, his, one of his most famous jokes is this joke about a, a moth going yes, into a podiatrist's office. That's the best joke. But it's, a, it's done in the style of the death of Ivan Ilyich yes, by Leo Tolstoy. Right, yeah. A lot of people don't, don't get that. Yes. But you, you would have to read so deeply in the Russian novelists to even think to put that joke together. <laughs> and, but he says to me, I'm not an educated man. He says, my son is much more educated than I am. He's got schooling. I don't. But... Uh, I've just always known that it's true. And I thought, well, you're ahead of, the, ahead of me, buddy. Because mm. <laughs> you know, I do have some schooling, and I didn't know it was true for years. And it went on for about two weeks or so. And I kind of blew it because I didn't write our nightly response one night. And I, let mm. it, I was just busy. I was traveling, whatever. And then it kind of petered out. And I was sort, of, mm. sort of kicked myself for it. He was supposed to come on my book show at PragerU. And had uh, he had agreed to do it, but he, he I said, okay, well, I'm, Norm, I'm leaving California, so you got to come on this month, basically. And he he didn't drive, he you know he he was a quirky guy. He'd always send a car for him. And he said, Michael, I, I'm happy to do it. Can we do it on Skype? I said, no, it's not a Skype show, Norm. Mm -hmm. It's an in-person show. You got to come in person. He goes, I can't go into a studio right now. And I thought this was him. He sort of it was famously somewhat agoraphobic and <laughs> germaphobic yeah, it yeah. seemed and so I just said okay well Norm whenever we get past this COVID thing you can come on the show and then he died mm. and I realized then in retrospect he was undergoing pretty serious treatment at right at that time uh, but, but we got on the topic because 
This was a guy, this brilliant guy, who just knew it, who just opened the Bible and just knew that it was true mm. intuitively. And I had a less in, intense but similar reaction, which is you're reading the Gospels, yeah, and you, it just sparkles, and you just know that it's true. Unlike any, I've read lots of good books. But. It's, it's like that question that somebody asked you last night about you know, how do you argue for what is beautiful? And Aquinas actually does that. And he actually has this very unhelpful line. He says, uh, the beautiful is that which when seen pleases or something. <laughs> but I liked your point that it's like some things, like we can discourse about these things, but we can also look at them and understand them to be yeah. so. And yeah, something I, similar was happening with you, it seems like, with the Gospels. It, it was, just, I, I love uh, St. Thomas Aquinas' answer because it's... <laughs> It's almost like a norm joke. It's just, well, you know, beautiful things are things that when you look at them, you know, they seem beautiful to you. You know, that's kind of what he's saying. So you know? yeah. And uh, yeah. but, but he writes it this beautiful way. Uh, but uh, yeah, I kind of go more to the Justice Potter Stewart answer. Mm -hmm. I know it when I see it. And I, I don't mean to be cute with that answer. I think it's actually important that we, that we become more comfortable speaking in that way and thinking in that way. Uh, there was a breaking point in the really shallow pseudo-conservatism that has bedeviled us in this country for the past few decades. And the breaking point was when David French, then a columnist for National Review, uh, defended Drag Queen Story Hour as a blessing of liberty. Mm. And so Rabbi Mari attacked him for it said, whatever this is, we got to move past this. And it became a whole big debate. And David French's argument was, well, who's to say? Who's to say? If you tell me that I can't have a drag queen story hour at a public library, why, maybe, maybe someone will say that you can't have church on Sunday. Mm. And just who's to say, you know? One man's drag queen story hour is another man's church. I thought... No, I can say, and you can say, and we can all say, we all know the difference yeah. between a drag queen twerking for kids and a pastor preaching we the We just gospel. have to stop lying. And we have to stop lying. By the way, if you can't know the difference between those things, you certainly cannot have self-government. Self-government is predicated on the idea that we have reliable faculties of reason yes. and a reliable moral conscience, mm -hmm. and we can discern between true and false and, and good and evil. And beautiful and ugly we we actually can and we've we've simply deluded ourselves into denying the 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 very faculties that make us human yeah thanks so much for watching please like if you liked and if you loved subscribe